Hey everyone, my name is Azizia and today I want to talk to you about this awesome project that I created last year, which I interviewed 20 immigrant women that they share their stories to the world that they get. And my vision was to inspire and empower other immigrant women that they want to come here, they want to immigrate to Canada or any other countries, but they have that fear that what's gonna happen next or what's what's happening, or they are going through a hard time because we all go through it. And I just wanna inspire them by watching these videos that if they did it, they can do it too, and they are not alone. I hope you enjoy them. And if you like my, my channel, please subscribe and I have more projects coming on soon. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Okay, hello, hello. Here we are with Lena Yang, right? Is that right? Yes. How do you yeah, it? it is right. <laughs> and we, it's May 20th and we're still in quarantine. And how are you doing, Lena? I'm doing great. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoying um, the <laughs> nice weather from inside. <laughs> how is it affecting your, um, your life, the COVID-19 and quarantine and everything? Um, so what happened is very tragic and what's happening out there is a severe problem, but on a personal level, this gave me so much time to actually reflect, go in. Uh, I, I've spent a lot of time writing and taking courses. So, but it was a blessing in disguise personally. And I'm very careful in saying that because people, a lot of people are affected by it. Um, and yes, my income has been hit, but I'm not <laughs> focusing on it. I'm more grateful that I, I do have that extra time. Yeah, I'm grateful too, because I met you during this quarantine yes. time. And <laughs> it's amazing like how we met and we haven't met in person, but here yeah. we are. <laughs> exactly. We see each other uh, like three times a week, for sure. <laughs> yeah, at nine in the morning in our pajamas, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly so i'm just gonna start um you know go through the, my the interview yeah. about the empowering uh immigrant women who, sure. who, who wants to come to canada or who came to canada and just mm -hmm. you know the inspiration the stories about all of us and uh, if you can tell us about yourself how old were you when you came to canada and what do you do right now in canada so i came to Canada when I was 16. So I came here in year 2000, August. So I was in grade, I think I went to grade 11 in high school. So I, I don't qualify per se that I came before I was 20, but I came here as a visa student actually, and um, came here by myself. So I rented a room um, at someone else's house. So it was a room and board accommodation. Uh, so did two years of high school here and then went to university. So um, originally went to life science then got into pharmacy, worked as a pharmacist, but didn't, it didn't really fit too well with my personality. And I eventually got out and currently I work in a commercial real estate field. So that's where I am now. Wow, totally different. Like from pharmaceutical and then real estate is just <laughs> yeah totally different and you are originally from south, south korea. korea right so um yeah. i know you said you came at 16 and you are you don't qualify but i'm sure you are, you were old enough to remember <laughs> the those uh, first few years yeah. that uh that yes until you settle down so like those during during that even first year, two years, like how was that? How was it? What did you go through? And the, did you have any struggles or? Oh yeah. Um. So I I guess my struggles were not so much financial struggles because I did have support from my parents. Uh, my struggle was mostly fitting into this culture, learning to speak English, write English, and then now that pressure of oh my gosh, um, I have to graduate high school and then go to university here. Can I do it? Can I make it? Um, one advantage I had in a way is that 
in South Korea, like I will, or I, I don't know if it's a South Korean thing, but like I was very strong in math and science and that's something that doesn't really require English as much. So in terms of uh, school workload, like uh, I, I excelled in those math because I learned everything already in Korea. So it was like uh, math itself, I didn't have to learn. I just had to figure out how to understand it in English and then do, do the problem. So I guess I that had that advantage. But then the downside of thing was because I had so much pressure to do well and get into university that I avoided taking any courses that would drop my average. So I actually wanted to take a music class and thinking, oh, I play violin so I can go and make new friends and do the music. The thing is here, when you take music class, you actually have to write an essay. So now I had that mindset of um, anything below 90% is a fail. So I would say, oh, if I got below 90%, it's a fail. So in a music class in a, with an essay, I got 70% and then I was devastated. And I was like, I felt like a failure, so I dropped it. Same thing happened with other courses. Every time I take something and then the first test, if it's less than 90%, I'm like automatically, oh, I can't have it on my transcript, drop, 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 right? So I guess, when I applied to the university, my grades were great, but I was limited to the science field because all the art section, I didn't like even feel confident to go to university and do the essay. So I limited myself to that small math and science focused world. And naturally I did go into life science, which led to pharmacy. So, um, and to, in my mind, I was like, okay, how do I survive in this country? Um, it wasn't more of how do I find myself? What do I do well? What do I excel? But it was more like, okay, which major do I need to pick in order to survive so that I can get a job? Um, I'm a, like, uh, came here as a visa student. And all, in my mind, I'm like, okay, so I have to find a way to survive. What if my father stops supporting me? I need a job that pays the bill, job that pays the bill. So uh, there are so many great pharmacists or other healthcare professionals out there who really love their job and who help their patients, I went in with the wrong mindset. So because I went in with the wrong mindset, I didn't enjoy the job as much. Looking back, if I go back now with a different mindset, I'm sure I would enjoy it way more. But because I was only looking at things, so every hour I'm looking at it as the time spent here in order to make money and there was absolutely no job satisfaction there so that was one of my mistakes i made in earlier on um and on, yeah so another thing was i had always had that fear that people would judge me because um, i'm an immigrant or well i be eventually became an immigrant but then there was this victim mindset. So when someone says something, automatically I, I started think, thinking, oh, is it because I'm immigrant? Is it because I'm Asian? Is it because of my accent? Is it because of this? And then eventually like you start hiding. So whenever you have to do a presentation, you don't feel com comfortable speaking in front of a group of people because you have an accent instead of embracing that I have an accent and in, instead of embracing my personality, I was hiding. So that was, that's one thing I kind if I can go back in time and if I can talk to my younger self, that's something I want to tell, <laughs> tell her. Don't be so afraid to challenge. Don't be afraid to try different things and explore. <laughs> um, and yeah, don't have the victim mindset because, you know, people are still nice and I start making up the stories within myself. Oh, I think that person's judging me. I think uh, because I, I made a grammar error here, that person's gonna think I'm an idiot. <laughs> right? And whenever I see new people now, like people who, uh, who are new to the country, I have tremendous respect because it's a new country. They have to learn the language. They, like, they have to go out and get a job. And there must be so much fear within them. Like, how will I survive? Like, 
can I manage here? And will people accept accept me? And I, I see so many people afraid to speak up. And they're like, oh, I feel so small. I don't speak the language. I don't know the culture. I'm afraid to say something that's wrong. And, you know, it's all people here, so. <laughs> we're all humans and we all, you know, yeah. we all make mistakes. Or, um, okay, I just, I just want to stop for a second. Or, okay, so um, what do you think was the, how did you overcome all those uh, challenges that you were telling me? Um, so I, I guess I'll go back a little bit and um, say like in my university years, I was overstressed and I put on extra stress on myself for uh, <laughs> no good reasons. But I did develop a medical condition, uh, ulcerative colitis. So it's pretty much like having diarrhea the whole time. And then I had a little bit of anxiety and depression that I was dealing with. So I think all the struggles over the years kind of gave me that. And um, just, I kind of look only treat, look, treated the symptoms. I, I went to see the doctors and I was tr trying to treat actual symptoms of the ulcerative colitis, not realizing that it was actually coming within me. So uh, when I, finally started um, learning to meditate and going deeper uh, on a personal journey. Um, well, I, I didn't meditate in order to heal myself, but what happened as a result, side effect of meditating was because I, I was able to see how anxious I was and how, how much stress I put on myself. I was able to kind of relax a lot. And then I was able to actually heal the ulcerative colitis. So I didn't take any, I, like, yeah, I lived with it for over 10 years and it just magically disappeared. And I was like, huh, that's interesting. <laughs> How did that happen, right? So, uh, so that's, um, so that plus taking the time to care for myself because all life, I think I was trying to impress others. I wanted to impress my parents. I wanted to be a good daughter, then a good student, and good employee when I'm working. And I always wanted to make sure people saw me as someone with value, someone who can contribute, and I always worked really hard. In, and in the process, I was really killing myself in a way, right? And then um, I think the moment when I realized that, oh, there is a deep belief within me that I'm not enough, that I'm not good enough. And I, I always felt like I need to do certain things in order to get, uh, get loved or for others to recognize me. And the, the, the thing is, I had all the check boxes marked, like I, I had the job, I, I graduated from a school, I, I had a boyfriend, then I got married, I, I bought a condo, like I did everything and yet I wasn't fulfilled. And there was a moment where I was like, okay, so you do need money to survive, but at, after a certain point, money is not everything. And there is, you really have to find the alignment with who you really are. Can, and I asked myself, can I actually do that to myself? Can I be okay with who I am? It's one thing to know or think that I'm enough versus actually feel that I'm enough and I'm actually, uh, trying to find that balance right now. So recently, one of the things I started was to draw. And the last time I drew was in high school. So that was like over 20 years ago. So I didn't even pick up a paintbrush for the last 20 years. And I suddenly had this urge to draw. And there's, there's two concepts that I was really trying to really feel it. One is to improve, which implies that you are not enough. So you want to improve yourself because where you are now is not good enough and you want to be a better person. It could be a positive thing if you want to improve, but then there's that negative um, meaning towards it, at least the way I interpret it. And then there's another thing, which is expand. 
So when you're okay with who you are and, and then you're curious on other things and you want to get better, then you're expanding. So there's no, oh, you're not, you're, you're not doing it just so that you get better, but then you are enough and yet you still want to expand and explore whatever life is giving you. And that drawing lesson, like drawing actually gave me that feeling because when I drew my first drawing, it kind of looked funny. Of course it looks funny, very childish, but I actually liked it. And I'm like, oh, can I do something else? And can I do something else? And I started expanding, tried different things, taking risks. And, um, when it, and then the beauty is, even if you make a mistake, I'm doing it for myself. There's no one to judge me. So I'm like, yeah, uh, it's okay to make a mistake. And I kept going and going. And now I have like at least five, six drawings that um, I've been doing in the last uh, week or so and having so much fun. So Wow, that, that's, a, yeah. that's really amazing. And that's a really yeah. good story because, um, yeah, as, as you were saying about the university and the school and the whole thing is yeah because we lose ourselves we lose our like how we were in childhood and like during yeah. the you know the process and growing up and being an adult and like the, fulfill like those expect, expectation of the society or the family or mm -hmm. the parent or this and that and then like and i'm i'm happy for you that you realize that like early on i know you went through those the stress and everything and i'm sure it wasn't fun but uh i'm i'm, I'm glad that yeah. you, you overcame it and you realized it and like now here you are uh talking about your story and like your journey and <laughs> and when you were telling me like oh you don't think you qualify like about this project like like everybody has a story like your story maybe is a different than yeah. someone else's story but we all have a story and your story is very very like like maybe i don't relate to it because i i never was a good student so <laughs> <laughs> i can tell that i tell you that like for sure 100 percent and but i can feel i can sense it because in all culture it's the same yeah thing always like you you want to you want to show your parents that you're doing good you're a good mm -hmm. you know, kid you are a, uh your your school the stuff it's it's good but i was always afraid of my dad because of all these stuff and and i never wanted to show him my grades but that yeah. that wouldn't be possible because i was a kid and he was an adult so obviously he would find out but <laughs> I I still remember like I still remember even my my dad passed away when I was twelve when I was really young when um, he passed away yeah. but still, I remember like still now you know I was telling you the other day about that leadership program at at forty nine I realized oh yeah you know like I always looking for permission I'm always looking for you know to, it's people to accept me yeah. and even for talking like i was always afraid to even raise my hand to talk because i was always feeling like oh i'm doing something wrong or i'm not you know i don't have the right answer or, uh, even like, it doesn't matter even in iran you know even back home because yeah. it's the self-doubt that left in me from childhood yeah. that it carried on like and no yeah. matter where you go no matter if you're an immigrant or you're a native like you know like even after 26 years of me speaking english but still like i felt yeah. like i still need that permission so i can talk mm -hmm. and in this leadership program like my coach just said like straight forward, like you don't need permission just talk just yeah. say, say what you want to say and and I feel like now, yeah, now just jump in. Like I, you, you see me and Darius is. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> I just jump in and say whatever, whatever yeah. I have to say. Like I really feel that. I mean, I can relate to that the story that you're saying. And that's yeah. amazing that how you, you realize it and then you 
did something about it. That's a that's a great part. That like realization and then coming back, like, mm -hmm. like seeking for help and that's that's yeah that's amazing and uh i don't know like do you do you think did you pay any i know while you were saying i guess paying a, a price for where you are right now i guess that was the time at the school right the yeah school. the health and school and work and yeah the the toll that i gave myself and just the health, mental and physical health was my price that I had to pay. And I'm kind of glad that I realized that not too, too late. So I'm still young, so <laughs> get to enjoy it as much. And yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Like I, yeah. No matter when, when whenever we realize it, I guess it's not too late. As yeah. Long as it's not too late. So, <laughs> and, um, um, I just, the last question is like, what suggestion do you, do you think you have for new immigrants or women that they want to immigrate to Canada? What, um, what do you recommend they should do or like they have to do? Don't ever feel small. <laughs> don't ever feel like just because your English is not perfect, uh, that people will not hear you they'll actually pay more attention to you because they'll have to listen to you to understand you and this is where especially Canada it's so multicultural you're gonna find people from your country and then you're gonna actually uh, learn that most of people are actually immigrants or their parents or their grandparents were immigrants and it's I actually love Canada because there's so much inclusion there and yes, there will be some odd situations where you feel like you're discriminated or where you feel like because of your background or because of your language or whatever, you feel like you are being discriminated. But um, most cases, most likely that it's not that, but it's sometimes the stories that we tell ourselves, the limiting beliefs, oh, uh, it's because I'm an immigrant, but it can happen to anyone, even even the native Canadians, you know, it's people to people, right? So, um, I, yeah, so if you actually come to Canada, just uh, know that there are so many great people out there. And I do hope that a couple of bad experiences initially can actually help shape that limiting beliefs and all those bad ideas in our head. But I just really hope that nothing stops you from sharing your voice talking talking to people and there are so many great people out there and great communities so even where even your countries i'm sure there are good people and not so good people that you don't resonate with it's same thing here it's where people live so and there will be there are a lot of opportunities here too so yeah that's that's true like uh because i emigrated five times and uh, yeah. So, crazy so many people ask me especially back home my cousins or friends and stuff like which country do you like most and like honestly like I, I we have an expression we say like the sky is blue wherever you go so it's it is blue everywhere yeah. <laughs> it's just like how you you create that you know the circle around you and then like yeah. how you find your way and like doesn't matter which language or which country or uh wherever you come from because we all are we are we immigrants like we have so many self-doubts and like so many like you know yeah. as you say like and it's not easy it's not it's never easy to start from scratch at any age but we did it they can do it too yes and i know you came as when you were 16 but look at you now <laughs> <laughs> and same as me i came when i was 24 and look at me now because yeah that's that's a that's the thing i i want to i want to share i overcame so many you know, challenges and like and so many fears and so many um you know obstacles in my life that doesn't matter i can 
relate to so many different women, like as a single person, as a, you know, married or like a single mom, like coming back with two kids and stuff. So it's just, yeah, just have to keep going and keep reaching out, keep, yeah. <laughs> keep finding the people, the good yes. people around you. <laughs> the community. Yeah, the community and uh, yeah. That was great. Thank you so much no for joining me and you know accepting this chat as a challenge. <laughs> it's not a challenge, but like telling the story is, is not that easy for everybody. But thank you for participating. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and I'm gonna see you on Friday. Friday, yeah. So <laughs> okay then Nina, thank you okay. and have a good day. You Take too. Care.